first of all, they introduced this curb and they introduced these. I just don't think the people at Walton Mill like casting. Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the Club 100 2020 season. Wasn't sure if we were actually going to make it to this point, but we have made it. And it's absolutely fantastic to be here back once again at Wilton Mill, but this time at the Zulu layer. And this time we're not in the E60, we are in the S. P60, the afternoon sprint races, and I'm racing in the big boy super heavyweight class. Oh yes, cannot wait for this one. I think I've got a really good shot at a potential race win. I we'll have to see what happens for the rest of the day, though. But before I get into qualifying, you are probably wondering uh, where the E60 is, because that was the championship that I was racing in uh, this year. Uh, basically, I was doing the E60 in the morning. I qualified in third and finished fifth. Why am I not bringing you the footage of that race? Um, basically, my GoPro had to do a battery reset on the way to the grid, and uh, yeah, I, didn't, I just wasn't able to get the GoPro to turn on, so the only footage we've got, I'm afraid, is a GoPro pointing backwards and two spins, and it is a real shame that we weren't able to get uh, any footage of the E60, because again, best result of the year, but there we go. And the E60, I have to say, a fantastic replacement for the Endurance Series, and I think that really encapsulates just how good a job uh, Club 100 have done this year, getting through the pandemic, so thank you E60, it's been fantastic, and we look forward to the Endurance Series returning next year, but where there is a lack of E60 footage, that means that I'm able to bring you more footage of the SP60 from this weekend, and as I mentioned, I am racing in the super heavyweight class, I think I've got a really good shot of the victory. I was weighing in at 94 kilos, so cart number 44, uh, cart number 94, weighing 94 kilos. Happy days, and I had to weigh up to 96 kg. So yeah, let's get on then with some qualifying. And as you'll notice, the Rich Tea time is back, and it's now in the middle, keeping things fresh here at Rich Tea Racing. But yes, let's get on board then with my fastest lap into turn one. Little bit of a lift here through the day. Uh, obviously, it was a wet line, so I couldn't take that as flat as I would like to, but we can absolutely bury it down towards Christmas, breaking basically now dry, just at the Marshall Post, get the flick in, slightly missed the apex there, it has to be said, but no matter, we head now into Inkerman's, got to hope we don't catch up to these guys in front, we are getting very close, but it doesn't look like at the moment they are going to compromise my lap, so heading through Zulu, lifting and clipping the curbs through the second and third of Zulus, and then burying it down towards the boot, breaking just before the Marshall Post, and make sure you don't hit Nicky, who's just making sure he's staying offline, and now burying it through the boot through the first two parts then it's a little bit of a lift into the final part of the boot just missed the apex because it was a little bit wet there and then come across the line to set a 49.769 and that was good enough for pole position in the super heavyweight starting p8 overall in the heavyweight race because obviously the heavyweights and the super heavyweights race together and without any further ado let's jump straight into it with this race start it's go 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 keeping things fresh once again with the rich t timer heading into turn one and already we've been overtaken by that chap in the green and black round the outside into turn one that's a little bit embarrassing there shouldn't be letting anyone around the outside into turn one at wilton mill but anyway now coming down towards christmas keeping to the inside blocking off any any, any advances from the rear give peacock a little bit of a tap there in to Christmas, but we have survived these first few corners. Are we going to survive Inkman's? Yes, we are. We also give Pe Peacock another massive shunt in the rear. We've been forced slightly to the outside. That is because we've got man in green and black on our inside, and we had to yield there, and now we actually lose a bit of time out of the third part of Zulu, so we're actually going to cut forward now to the end of the lap, and you'll see there, there is a man who, I could be wrong, his name is Lindley, I think, but uh, yeah, he's just overtaken me down the inside into turn one, and that again, is a little bit embarrassing there, so a few embarrassments so far on this opening lap, but anyway, we move on, and you can see here at the end of lap two, it is absolute pandemonium uh, up in front, Lindley getting the jump on that chap in all red and actually, actually no sorry there's, there's a bit of white on the suit as well now as we come out of the second corner you can see i've just got such a good run on this chap in the red and a bit of white we're going to go 
down the inside into Christmas. Oh, nearly if we're breaking a gone wrong there. We could have been into the side of Lindley, but we have got a lovely little move down the inside into Christmas on the man in red. And as you can see, a few minutes later, we are now on to the back of Lindley out of Christmas. And is there going to be an opportunity down the inside into Inkman's? Oh, yes, there is. Send that. Lick the stamp. And we have made up another position. Now, I really expected to then go marching on, create a little bit of a gap to the guys behind me, but that did not happen. I really was not in the groove then. As you can see, man in all red and a bit of white getting back past me. I get right on his ass, and then he gives me the special signal like we are going for the guys in front and I'm trying to listen I'm trying to be a good boy and do what people tell me from now on but you can just see here just losing it into the boot I really wasn't happy going into that corner and as you can see there another man in green and black although it's more black than green it has to be said has just overtaken me so it's not gone well and as you can see here we've got another man going down the inside single man reveal yourself it is Richard Newton who has just gone down the inside in Christmas and now I'm going to send one right back on him into ink but it's a bit of a dive bomb and now Richard Newton at the back in front of me so this is a little bit of a problem because now I am second in the super heavyweight category and obviously if I want to win today I've got to make sure that I win this race today so I'm going to get right onto the back of Newton's arse now heading through Christmas and it looks like we've got a decent run out of Boxing Day heading into Inkermans and once again sending it down the inside it's a bit more of a controlled move less of a dive bomb there but just a few corners later Newton going down the inside into the first part of the boot so a decent little scrap here for the lead of this race not often I get to say that but now all of a sudden getting in the way of me and Newton is this chap in a navy blue helmet with a bit of a rainbow lace on the top so he's got in the way here and that is going to cause an extra dimension to this battle for the lead but as we come into the final corner as I mentioned in the qualifying bit it is slippy on the apex of the final corner and that has cost this man in the blue navy helmet so heading a little bit further on obviously now right back onto the back of Richard Newton now coming through Zulu got out again was gaining on him nice and steadily but something was really going wrong for me in this race particularly at the third and final part of Zulu and when Richard uh, basically drove away from me uh, coming out of the Zulu section there that was the moment for me where I just sort of said you know what got to buckle down and just sort this out and I did do that as you see there I am now onto the back of Richard Newton and he just missed the apex of the final corner so I've got an opportunity here hopefully down towards Christmas heading through the first two corners you can see here I'm right on to the back of him and it's surely going to be a relatively easy move down the inside on the brakes into Christmas and there we go that is the lead of this race for the super heavyweights regained and that is where I would stay for the remainder of the race pumping in the lap times getting a fantastic little lead out to Richard Newton and coming across the line to finish in first place and take a really good result into the second race of today is what I would like to say happened. What actually happened was this. The pitiful bellow there of a infantile pillock who has well and truly cocked it up um, or any other amount of James May phrases that I can think of to describe just how idiotic and stupid that was um, yeah I don't really have any I have no excuses for that um, and, uh, like obviously it's not also not just the fact that I was leading the race uh, by about six seconds it's not that I've just thrown away that lead it's also the fact that I was just downright dangerous what I did that chap was getting out of his car and I hit him he could have fallen over, he could have, he could have seriously hurt himself. So, uh, yeah, I really, really, really cocked that one up. And the, I suppose the only thing I can say there is that complacency uh, just got, got the better of me. And I thought I'd left enough of a gap, but as we, if, if you watch it back, you can see quite clearly um, I just have not left enough of a gap. So, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, that's racing. Um, obviously, the win for this race is gone. The chances of winning Super Heavyweights overall um, is also basically out of the window, barring any um, major upsets in the second race. But we can live in hope. I did actually only cross the line in 21st place fourth in class so there is definitely a podium is definitely still on 
for this race today. So we can live in hope and just let's just see how we get on. Uh, we're starting in, obviously starting in 21st for the second race. Uh, the first, the results from the first race set the grid for the second race. And actually the two guys in front of me, Stig Elbot and Richard Allen, some say that is the Stig's real last name. Uh, they are starting directly in front of me. So I've got a really good chance there. If I can get a good start here, got a really good chance to get a good result here for Super Headways. And it's go, go, go once again in this race. We've left a little bit of a gap to, uh, I think that is Stig in front of us. We've got Oranges and New Black on the in, on the inside. Lindley just going down the inside as well. But I've got a good little switchback out of the second turn. And it's getting really tight into the crook. And oh, bang. <laughs> I have done very well there to not lose it on the grass. We're still in this race, still in with a chow. Uh, Matt, that's the man in the navy helmet and rainbow laces trying to go down around the outside even into Christmas. But I've said no thank you to him into Inkman. So we're now going to just, just settle down a little bit uh, in the on this first lap through the Zulu section, doing this much better than we were in the, at the start of the first race. We've got a little run here on this track. He's actually wearing a bandit suit. You don't see one of them around too much these days, but I've decided not to overtake him and looking to try and do something like a cutback. And oh, we're right on the grass once again over the curb. We've lost time then to the man in the bandit suit. And now it's absolute pandemonium heading up the, uh, the main straight. And it looks like, oh, we, there goes the man in the bandit suit. And I come so close. I think the throttle cut cut out, uh, come so close then to spinning out once again. So the fact that we've survived these opening laps is somewhat of a miracle. We are still in this race. I think quite a few people went off at the start. Actually, we're just about to get a like, little bit of a recovery overtake on this chap in the white and black. But yeah, enough people went off at the start that I know for a fact that I'm still in this race. There's the Stig, and now it is a case of just getting a few moves done in a successive laps to regain those positions. There goes the Stig. There goes a man who had bear on the back of his uh, suit and now we're going to overtake this chap even before Christmas just going through the crook got a much better exit out of turn two and there we go we have gained a few positions and we come onto the back of man in navy helmet with a bit of rainbow lace on the top we nearly thought about sending four four overtakes into Christmas on in four laps but I decided to hold back a little bit not go too hasty too early and this turned out to be a really good decision because there you go you can see that chap spinning off and there goes Richard Newton so I have overtaken the chap that I am trying to overhaul in the terms of winning the super heavyweights outright in this round and the first step towards that goal is overtaking man in navy helmet with a bit of rainbow laces down the inside into Inkerman. So I've now got it's Lindley, Orange is the New Black and Richard Allen out in front of me and Richard Allen is currently leading the super heavyweight so he is my target but first of all I've got to get past Lindley and Orange is the new black and as you see there Lindley just losing it as he as he tries to get past Orange is the new black so I'm now able to go down the inside into Inkman's although it's not the cleanest of moves and as you can see I've now lost time to both Orange is the new black and to Richard Allen, but we're gaining a little bit into the boot. But as you now you see, you see that I'm taking a bit of a wider line. This is the unfortunate consequence of having the cameras on the nose cone because there goes Lindley, there goes Navy, and there I go sliding back past both of them. Lin um, Navy once again doing what he did in the first race, trying to go down the inside into the final corner. And as it's slippery on the line, just not working for him, but someone it is about to work for is Lindley. And he, I, I, I fought that one a little bit too hard. I should have given up the place. And uh, yeah, he now gets back past me, gives me the secret signal to work together. And now here we go. Here is that working together. Lindley down the inside of Orange's the New Black into Christmas. And I'm going to follow him suit into Inkerman's. And there we go. Go. So it is now just Lindley between me and my target Richard Allen, although it was because I've just hit those tyres. And I thought tyres weren't the same as cones, but as it turns out, they are. And as it turns out, I have now got a penalty. And what's really remarkable about this is that you can actually hear my reaction as I see that I've got a penalty. Let's have a listen. Such a strange noise for me to have made, and the fact that GoPro picks it up is quite extraordinary. But what this means is that one position will be added to my finishing position at the end of this race. So it is now imperative that I get past Richard Allen, and it looks like I've done that heading into Christmas down the inside. But no, here comes Richard Allen back past me through a boxing day, and I have a little look through increments, but nothing doing. Is there anything doing around the outside of Zulu? Absolutely 
no chance. So we are going to cut forward a little bit and you see here through the first two corners he had a little bit of a gap to me but I've just been able to claw back in. In fact I've clawed in on him a little bit too much giving him a bit of a bump and therefore a bit of a power surge into Christmas. To head into Christmas I've pumped him once again, puts his hand up in protest, obviously not happy with how I'm conducting myself and now I'm going to go down the inside into increments. I've got to get past him if I'm to have any chance of winning super heavyweights for this race. And you can see the lines I'm taking through Zulu. Uh, basically Richard was on my outside. If the camera can't pick it up but what it can pick up is Richard sent sliding it down the inside uh, into the final corner and there goes Orange is the new black as well so he has entered the fray and somebody else has entered the fray is this chap no idea where he came from he got no quarrel with you you have no place here well, actually he's just sort of me right out by going down the inside of orange is the new black into christmas and i'm now going to be able to follow suit a bit like lindley earlier and head down the inside into Inkerman. So we've now got to hope that this chat, actually, we don't even need to talk about that because the new chat has already got past Richard Allen. As we now head down the straight towards Christmas, I'm gaining on him in a much better way than what I managed on the previous attempt. Down the inside, on the brakes, have we got the move done on this occasion? It looks like it. The sun is beating down. It's glorious. It's a glorious end to this day. But is it going to be a glorious end to this race? No, not at the moment because Richard Allen has now got back past me on the exit of Inkerman. It's a real shame you can't see him on the camera, but that is just what we have to live with. Please bring back Helm Mountain cameras. They're so much better. Anyway, what I have been able to work out whilst fighting Richard is that he is a very feisty driver that does not give up positions easily. He's also better than me through Zulu, but crucially, I am better than him through the first two corners, and I'm faster than him down the straight. I might be carrying a little bit, a little bit less weight than he is. And as you can see here, it's almost as if I've got DRS just closing in on him so much. He's just about left me a can't switch. Heading into Christmas, I go down the inside, but Alan able to fight back. I think I tried to park it on the apex, and that just did not work so we're gonna go through Zulu but there's still nothing going there and now we are once again onto the main straight heading down towards Christmas I think about something around the outside that would be quite extraordinary but I've given myself a decent drive out of Christmas coming through Boxing Day are we now gonna absolutely lunge it down the inside into Inkman's yes we are and at the moment we have got move but Alan undoubtedly going to be around the outside of Zulu uh, don't still not entirely sure why he's trying that never going to work better off trying to fight me later on but I'm now going a little bit defensive here making sure Alan doesn't get back past me but but for doing that I've missed my apex I've missed both my apexes awful cornering and Alan able to get back past me once again and the race this race gets slightly neutralized for a bit thanks to some yellow flags and it takes a few minutes until I'm once again on to the back of Richard Allen now I'm definitely going for the outside this time and nothing's going to quite work there's actually a little bit of contact there between his rear bumper and my front bumper but I've got a much better drive than I did on the previous attempt, much closer than the previous attempt, but this time Alan has turned in a little bit earlier than normal and I'm not able to, not, no chance around the outside of Zulu and now I am compromised. I've got my lines wrong and Alan able to drive away from me and as you're about to see, there goes Navy and the Rainbow Lakers and also there goes Oranges and New Black. So in my desperation to get in front of Alan, I have not been able to do it and I've now lost more places that win in the super heavyweights for this race slipping away and chances of a podium for the round overall also hanging by a thread if i'm going to have any chance of getting rich i've got to get past oranges and new black as a matter of urgency just over five minutes of this race left to go and this time i am firmly going to try it around the outside of christmas on oranges and new black and it actually at this point looks like i might have got that move done leave as little space as possible but oranges and new black able to send it down the inside into inkman's i lose even more time to him and to alan and to navy but a new element has entered the fray. It is the front runners. We've been fighting each other so much that we're now actually getting lapped in a half hour race, which is quite extraordinary. But now there is surely an opportunity when these guys catch up to Oranges New Black, Navy, and Richard Allen. I'm surely going to have an opportunity. There goes Oranges New Black. He's been yeeted into another existence. And I think that is Anwar Beryl Smith and some chap in a white helmet as well. They're now overtaking Allen. Beryl Smith go around the outside of Allen into Zulu. Allen fights it for some reason he's now lost it through the final part of Zulu and I'm able to take the lead 
of this super heavyweight category in this race, a lead I would not relinquish. However, it is now a case of putting as much distance between myself and Alan as possible and praying that somebody else is able to overtake him because at the moment, as far as I'm concerned, I am losing at least a place to Alan. As far as I'm concerned, he is still right behind me. As we come onto the final lap, you can see that I am properly gained on Navy and you would think that I would make every effort to overtake him and make sure that I've got at least one person between me and Alan but for some reason in this moment in the race I didn't I was not thinking of that I was trying to just play it a little bit more calmly so I didn't end up picking up another penalty for myself and it was only at this point after the final decent overtaking place on this track where I realized actually I should probably be overtaking this chap but there are basically no overtaking places left he's got a decent run uh, out of the final part of Zulu heading into the boot nowhere near enough there's no chance of an overtake I've done a bit better than him on through the boot but there is I'm just nowhere near close enough to even think about an attempt into the final corner although he's just clicked the monster curb and it's now a run to the line and by a nose Navy stays in front of me so it's a pretty good job then that Richard Allen fell by the wayside finishing in like 29th or something and that meant that I was able to take the win for the SHWs in this race and overall for the round I finished as runner-up picking myself up a lovely little trophy there it is but um yeah that trophy should be a little bit bigger I think and I think what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to learn from today and make sure that sort of thing never happens again and I will have an opportunity to do that next year because I have entered myself into nine of the 11 rounds of the SB60 absolutely love today was immediately convinced that I should be doing the SP60 next year and hopefully I will therefore have an opportunity to redeem myself for today, pick up a couple of race victories through the season and who knows, maybe even challenge for the championship. I'm also going to be doing the endurances with a couple of mates of mine so this today really giving me a bit of a forefront or foreshadowing even for what doing two races on a Saturday will look like and feel like I was absolutely battered by the end of today and that is something I've got to look forward to in 2021 and hopefully looking forward to a fantastic year of Club 100 Racing next year. They've done an absolutely fantastic job with the pandemic this year so hopefully that will carry through into next year. Thank you so much for watching this channel as well guys. I think it's come a really long way from a Club 100 perspective this year. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please be sure to subscribe hit that bell for notifications, and for one last time, please, remember. Don't be a cunt. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you next year. Ta-ta, and farewell.